Hi, I want you to meet Dr. Vanya Pankiewicz from University of Wisconsin. Today she will tell us more about the revolutionary research that she does on enabling crops to fix their own nitrogen. This research has an outstanding potential to transform agriculture and make it sustainable. So, Dr. Pankiewicz, uh, what is the current problem with overuse of nitrogen fertilizers and why do we need to fix it? So I would like to start first talking about what is nitrogen fixation, because I don't think it's a topic that people hear every day. So nitrogen fixation is the conversion of denitrogen uh, molecule of nitrogen that we have in the air into ammonium. And ammonium can be used by plants. It's an important nutrient that plants need to grow. So this can happen pretty much in three different ways. Um, the first one is a chemical reaction that is called the Haber-Bosch process. It's a chemical process that was invented in the beginning of the 20th century. Um, the second type is bacteria and archaea, or archaea that are microbes, which we call them diazotropes. And they have a specific enzyme that's called nitrogenase. And this enzyme is able to convert the nitrogen in the air to ammonium. So the ammonium can again be used by the plants. The third way we can convert the nitrogen in the air is by lightning, which is called atmospheric fixation. Uh, but this contribute, contributes into a less extent in the, in the environment. So first, um, I would like to say that nitrogen fertilizers, they are not a bad thing because their use, their use was essential component um, for the green re revolution that happened in the 40s and 50s. If it wasn't because of nitrogen fertilizer, we wouldn't be able to produce the amount of food that we produce nowadays, which uh, because of this, we are able to currently feed half of the world's population through food and agriculture production. However, the intensive use of fertilizer can bring some issues. Um, globally, we produce fertilizer through this Haber-Bosch process, which is a chemical way. And this process relies on natural gas, which is a fossil fuel, to provide energy to convert um, the molecule of nitrogen in the air to ammonia. So, we are feeding half of the world on natural gas, and this is a non-renewable source. So then we can see that this is a problem because at some point, we're gonna end up without these natural resources. Um, the second point is that we are also using fertilizers to grow crops to produce biofuel. So we are using a natural gas to produce biofuel. So it's not the most efficient way of doing that. Um, another issue is in developing countries where the costs of fertilizer are higher compared to uh, more rich countries. And also another problem in developing countries is the logistics to bring bags of fertilizer to small farmers and to remote areas with bad infrastructure. So, um, using uh, less fertilizer and or finding other options will help those small farm farmers in a different way. Um, the third thing about uh, fertilizers, the, their intensive use, is that it can um, it can um, increase the amount of nitrogen leaching into uh, into underground waters. The nitrogen leaching is pretty much the rainfall will bring down the nitrogen and this will contaminate and cause the eutrophication of streams and rivers. And this can degrade the coastal zones and also lakes. Uh, and this is well known in the case of the death of the Gulf of Mexico, where we were able to see a uh, big eutrophication of that entire zone. Uh, this is well documented in U United States, but it, it also happens in some places in Europe, in India, in China, and even Brazil. We can have, in South America, we can have places where this intensive use of nitrogen can cause the eutrophication and of, uh, of, the, of water. And a second environmental issue 
is that the degradation of fertilizers into greenhouse gases like nitrous uh, oxide contribute for global warming. So those are the, issue, the biggest issues. Can you tell our viewers, how did this research start it, and how would you describe your work? So the research on biological nitrogen fixation as a big area um, it started um, more than 100 years ago. So people have been trying to improve biological nitrogen fixation outside of the legumes for more than 100 years. Um, the critical problem that we find when we establish this type of work is that this enzyme that is present in bacteria um, is, needs to be protected against oxygen. So oxygen, which is in our atmosphere, can actually damage this enzyme. So there is a lot of research working on that for many years. And another, uh, another critical problem that we need to, to, to work in this research is to provide enough energy to the bacteria. So um, the bacteria needs energy to produce this enzyme and then to convert the nitrogen to ammonium. So this is another type of research that has been done for many years already. And the efficiency of transfer of nutrients between plants and diazotrophs, which are those bacteria. Uh, this efficient crosstalk between plants and bacteria needs, needs to happen in an efficient way. So both um, the host and the microorganism will uh, benefit from this interaction. And most approach to improve biological nitrogen fixation actually in non-legumes focus on solving these issues through the bacteria. And it can be done both by engineering or isolating different and more efficient microbes. Uh, more specifically, the work that I'm doing right now, it's related to the area roots, which are roots that grow on the uh, stems of corn. So those area roots, they are able to produce mucilage, which is like a gel that is excreted from the plant after a rain event. And this can host bacteria that fix nitrogen. So um, our approach um, was looking at the solution from the plant side, so not from the bacteria side. And it first started um, as um, a way of looking at the diversity that we have in the nature. So it's a, it's a natural approach that nature is using um, since we don't know when. And at the same time, this was a super risky project because there was the chance that nothing was there, you know? So currently um, this project is um, taking different ways to understand the biological nitrogen fixation on air roots of maize. What is the current stage of the research? So a research like that has many aspects that can be studied. Um, we have the basic aspects, which includes understanding how plant and bacteria interact and how they evolve it to such a mechanism. So first we wanna know the basics about um, how many nodes a corn plant uh, have and, and from those nodes, how many nodes will produce more error roots? And those error roots, uh, will they produce more mucilage if they are thicker or if they are thin? Um, and how the mucilage is produced after uh, water perception, so after rain, this gel is excreted, so how this happen? Those are all basic questions that can be answered using uh, molecular biology and, and uh, many other types of um, scientific methods. We also want to understand the microbe side. So which microbes and which microbial functions are involved in these interactions? And how is this nitrogen released from the bacteria? Because these bacteria, they uh, fix the nitrogen from the air, but they does not altruistically release this nitrogen. So there might be some mechanisms that are um, helping or even making this crosstalk between plant and bacteria to be more efficient. In terms of more applied aspects, um, we want to work on breeding 
to introduce the traits by crossing with commercial varieties that are already available for corn. Also, identify specific plant genes that might be involved in developing this trait and, and possibly uh, to do uh, transgenic approaches later. And uh, we also want to work and identify microbes or microbial communities that can optimize this nitrogen fixation in the system. If successful, how would this research change the world and how would it affect ordinary people? So as I mentioned above in the first question, the biggest benefit for everyone would be the increased sustainable sustainability of our food production. So at the same time, we also would increase the efficiency of biofuel production. This would be like um, a, a benefit for everyone. Um, more specifically in developing countries, the biggest thing is the cheap and the low cost access to nitrogen fertilizer, which, is, which represents half of their cost for production. And in more developed countries, again, uh, sustainability of the agriculture would be the biggest effect. Um, are you optimistic about the future? Yes, I am optimistic about science. Uh, many scientists around the world are work on these issues. We have science in the United States, in South America, in Europe, um, Asia, uh, Africa, everywhere. People are working on that for many years already. And we, house, we also have public and private funding that are dedicated to these issues and approaches. We have companies in many places in the world that are putting a lot of effort on finding um, um, different alter alternatives to uh, apply biological nitrogen fixation. And there are many approaches to solve this problem. Like I said before, we can, we can work on the plant side, on the bacteria side, on the interaction side. And um, besides our approach, that is um, area root, the nitrogen fixation on the area roots of corn, there are um, research working on genetic modifications of bacteria and also other researchers working on iso isolating more and different um, types of bacteria that fix nitrogen. There are some groups working on engineering root nodules, which is a completely different approach uh, in cereals. And also engineering the nitrogenase, which is the enzyme, to directly um, be expressed into plant cells. So those are just to name few um, and very uh, important scientific uh, things that have been done on that field. And what would be your advice to the people? So I think this is an advice for everything that we, uh, that will rule our decisions in our daily life. So I, I think that we should base our decisions on scientific facts and not um, ideologies. And we should learn how to distinguish between reliable source of information from no reliable ones. And also we sometimes can fight claims that are not based on facts. Uh, we can find um, both types of knowledge nowadays online. So it's, um, we need to, to be careful to what we share and what we trust and how we use that for our daily lives. So from a practical standpoint, uh, speaking of myself, I do buy, for example, my food, no matter what the label says, uh, because my decisions are based on accurate scientific information. And with this information, I make my decision and not by misleading marketing ideas. I think when we talk about advice for ordinary people, um, I think, about any kind of people. So this would also include the farmers. Mm -hmm. So I think the farmers are biggest player in this, um, in agriculture, of course. And if they base their decisions in scientific knowledge, and then if they care about both yield and sustainability, this will be of a great uh, thing for the entire world. I think that's the biggest point. Uh, of course, we cannot force them to do that because 
when we are speaking about agriculture, there are many things that are evolved. Uh, but I think education and uh, based your decisions and your values on facts is the best thing we can do.